Now, uh, when you do form these membranes, they have very interesting uh, properties, which again are very different from the properties of uh, phospholipid-based membranes. And one of the things that is very important to us is uh, the dynamic exchange processes that occur in these membranes. So fatty acid molecules uh, in a fatty acid membrane flip-flop uh, back and forth from the outer leaflet to the inner leaflet. Uh, very rapidly, sub-second time scale. They also uh, exchange in and out of the membrane, so into solution where they can uh, exchange with molecules in my cells. And again, this is a very uh, rapid process so that the molecules that make up any given vesicle are constantly in flux and exchanging with the molecules in other vesicles, again, on the second uh, time scale. Okay. Uh, Another very interesting uh, aspect of these membranes is that they can be quite heterogeneous at a molecular level. Uh, and so these membranes can incorporate uh, not just uh, fatty acids, uh, but also their glycerol esters, as you see here, and uh, even lysophosphatidic acids, so ester with uh, phosphoglycerate. They can incorporate uh, alkanes uh, and uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons as well. Now, what happens when you make uh, membranes with these kinds of mixed uh, compositions? It's very, it's very interesting that in many cases, this results in uh, membranes that are much more stable. They're uh, more physically stable, more thermostable, and also often more permeable uh, to polar nutrients that we would like to bring in from the outside environment. And uh, so this uh, slide simply uh, illustrates uh, an experiment to look at the thermostability of uh, some vesicles made from a pure fatty acid as opposed to mixtures. So in this experiment, what we've done is to uh, encapsulate a short uh, DNA oligonucleotide within uh, vesicles and watch it leak out uh, over the course of about an hour. And now, if the uh, membrane is composed purely of meristoleic acid, this 14-carbon uh, singly unsaturated fatty acid, you can see that up to about 50 degrees, uh, nothing leaks out over an hour. But as the temperature uh, goes up to about 80, they become more leaky, and then at 90 degrees, everything is leaked out over an hour. Now, if you add some of the corresponding alcohol, you can see significant stabilization. But the most dramatic effect is when you add uh, a fraction of the glycerol ester of that fatty acid. And now, you can essentially boil these uh, vesicles for an hour, and none of the contents uh, leak out. At least uh, these uh, oligonucleotide contents are trapped inside. So that's really exactly what we want. We want uh, uh, the genetic material, long oligonucleotides, to stay inside indefinitely uh, while small molecules, nutrients, can get across the membrane uh, uh, very rapidly. Uh, and again, as the temperature goes up, the permeability to small molecules increases dramatically. 